Hello and welcome back to the channel. I've got the um, IBM 5140 Portable here. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite uh, retro computers. It is a, um, an XT Portable basically. And I have uh, actually two of the expansion modules. I'm not gonna go into a full detailed review of this machine. Um, I actually wanted to focus on uh, how I use the machine and um, using it along with an iOmega zip drive um, and, and kind of what functionality that unlocks. Um, the machine has two built-in floppy drives, but you're very limited on you know, how much you can store and, and uh, run at a time. Um, but having the access to a, a zip drive unlocks a lot of that uh, potential there. So let's go ahead and open up the machine. Um, I always really like the, the look and form factor of this machine. Um, it does have the kind of compressed uh, screen format. A lot of the built-in uh, software that came with this machine was, was sort of formatted for this screen. So for example, if there was like a circle or square element in the uh, software, it would be drawn for this, this screen aspect ratio. But the uh, two expansion modules that I have on the machine uh, clipped onto the back are the uh, parallel and serial port, uh, which enables me to hook up the parallel zip drive. And as well, I've got the uh, external CGA card, and uh, that will be outputting to the, uh, the TV here. Um, you can't actually utilize the built-in screen and the CGA output at the same time. And actually, in, with that CGA, I'm using the uh, composite uh, output uh, for uh, output to the TV. So let's go ahead and start up the machine. So we've got the zip drive powered up. I'll boot up the machine here. Get the TV on. So we can see with the, the backlit version of the screen here we, that we've got the uh, memory counting up. And now that we're past that uh, boot, initial boot up, we are getting the uh, blinking cursor, you can see on the uh, CGA output. So basically from this point forward, uh, the output I believe is just to the CGA. The screen is actually detachable as well. Uh, often I'll run it with the, uh, the screen detached. Uh, so you can see here, so this is actually Palm Zip by uh, Klaus uh, Peichel. And uh, actually works really great to uh, enable uh, zip drive usage on this machine. And uh, as you can see, you're, you only want to utilize uh, disk formats up to uh, 32 megabytes there. Just to give a quick overview of the outside of the machine, the, um, you can see it's got a handle on the front. You've got two switches, which you depress in to lift the screen. On this side, we've got the power adapter, power button. These are the two modules I mentioned, the serial and parallel module and the CGA external card. The back is just the back of that CGA module, but uh, each of these modules stack with a connector, allowing you to nest them uh, and continue. There's one other uh, module that I know of, uh, a uh, printer, I believe there might be a modem as well, or no, the modem is actually built in uh, but this this one doesn't have it. Uh, yeah, this port here. Um, there's that serial connection on this this piece here. And then just to show a side view of the monitor opening, you can see how the whole unit levers up uh, to allow access to the drives, as well as the uh, keyboard angling up as well. And then the display itself is detachable. So you can use the machine like this with the CGA output. Uh, you can actually place a display on top, uh, similar to what you might see on the uh, Apple IIc. And then I went ahead and pulled off one of the modules here. Uh, there's a, a lever you depress, which allows the module to disconnect. And you can see the connector, which would go into the back of the next module and the connector for connecting into the 
the next module behind this one. Um, and then we've got our composite output for the CGA, as well as IBM's proprietary connector. Um, but you can get the pinouts for this, which would allow you to hook up to a CGA monitor, or you can get the, the actual uh, IBM branded cable. So on the floppy drive here, I've got some utilities to allow me to shift the screen position. There is a calibration program that allows you to test the offset. So you can see at uh, one, we're just at the edge. So probably a one or two is the value we're gonna want. And then you actually apply it. So there we can see we're still offset a bit. So we'll try a two. And there we're getting the full edge. And then the C drive is the contents of the zip disk. And then we'll go ahead and run some uh, a few utilities to show you those running. So this is a, uh, a pretty cool um, PC speaker music application uh, where they've got sort of uh, PC themed uh, names, you know, system beeps, too many bits, battery low. And then uh, when you actually play, So there you have uh, some pretty cool PC speaker uh, tunes, at least for what you can get with the, uh, the PC speaker.
So that just about wraps up my quick look at the 5140 IBM Portable and how I utilize the iOmega zip drive to add extra storage and uh, better facilitate running various games and programs. It allows me to keep everything all stored in a single zip disk versus having a ton of floppies I'm having to swap in and out uh, to play with the machine. Especially if I uh, don't use it for a while, it's nice to be able to uh, have everything all in one place and uh, have an easy place to add new items as well. I've added a link in the description to the Palm Zip drivers that I'm using to enable the zip drive on this machine. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time.